Okay, good afternoon, everyone. It is five after one, and I'm going to call this meeting to order. I'll now call to order the October 5th, 2017 regular meeting of the City of Rancho Mirage City Council, Library Board, Housing Authority Board, and the City Council representing the Redevelopment Successor Agency. With that, I'm going to turn it over for our flag salute. However, uh, following the, the uh, flag salute, would you please remain standing for a moment of silence, honoring the victims of the tragedy that we faced in Las Vegas. So with that, I will ask Mr. Steve Kuhn. Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Okay. All right, maybe we have the roll call, please, Chrissy. Council Member Hobart? Here. Council Member Smotrich? Here. Council Member Weil? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Kite? Here. And Mayor Townsend? Here. Thank you. Now we're going to move on to uh, presentations. And this week is Fire Prevention Week. And as we do every year to help raise awareness for this important event, we are presenting a proclamation to our fire department acknowledging Fire Prevention Week. This year, we have highlighting at the importance of having an escape plan. The theme for this year's Prevention Week is Every Second Counts. Plan two ways out. Now I'd like to call the Ranch and Mirage Fire Division Chief Eddie Moore and the other firefighters present to the front of the room to tell us about the importance of having an escape plan and accepting the proclamation. Thank you. I'll meet you down there. Okay, guys. That's a lineup. Wow. <laughs> Eddie, why don't you come on over here and I'm gonna show you the presentation, which everybody can see. There's a presentation. I won't go with the all the where whereas. Is that okay with you? <clears throat> okay, so we're honoring Fire Prevention Week. And there's whereas is whereas is whereas is. But down at the bottom, now therefore, Charles Townsend, mayor of the city of Rancho Mirage, on behalf of the entire city council, do hereby proclaim throughout the city of Rancho Mirage Fire Prevention Week, October 8th through the 14th, 2017. Congratulations, let me give you that. I want to say a few words. Would you give that to the guys? Perfect. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just like he said uh, earlier in his uh, beginning opening statements is every second counts. Um, that second can be the decision between life or death um, with the, all the magnitude of issues that we can have within our residences. Um, obviously, this year, I mean, we go from uh, fire prevention week from our wildland side of things to now in October, we do uh, mainly our structural firefighter side. Um, there are a lot of things in our residents that maybe we don't think about, electrical issues, heating issues. Um, you know, this time of year, we start heating up our, our homes with our furnaces. Those are, if they haven't been attended to or maintenanced over several years, um, those rat traps that are inside of there, the, the uh, dust and, and, and uh, other items that are in there, they can easily catch fire when we spark up that heater. Have those inspected by um, a professional company. Having two ways out of your, your, your residence. 
articulate that to your kids. Currently, right now, we are doing a mini muster um, here in the coves with um, third graders. Uh, we feel that if we teach this information to third graders, that they're gonna take that back to their parents. And maybe some of that stuff that we're teaching now wasn't taught back in the day uh, when we were younger. Um, this program never existed when I was in school, and I think it's extremely important that we are educating our young to have them be able to educate their parents, and, and, and that's for real statement. Um, having those exit plans, making sure that it's known to the entire family, um, making that uh, a post-it on your refrigerator, uh, a meeting spot at the mailbox and, and, or, or, or wherever on your facility, but making that known to the entire family or guests that come in and, and, and stay for a weekend. So um, thank you, Mayor. Uh, for the proclamation. Uh, it means a lot to us. Um, I know uh, the guys over here to my left um, have done a lot of work in educating the public and handing out flyers and, and answering questions as we can. Please feel free to continue to do that uh, for all the residents out there. If you have any questions, call the fire station and, and we can either get you the answer or we'll route you to the, to the right place to get the right answer. So thank you, Mayor. Anybody want to introduce you guys? But, no, you do it. They're your crew. Hi, good morning, guys. Uh, this is we're the crew from Station 50, just right down here on uh, Highway 111, cross of Thunderbird. Uh, I'm Derek Gonzalez. I'm the engineer there at Station 50. I've uh, been there for two years. Came over to Rancho Mirage from the city of Mead Valley, and just uh, so you guys know, I've I've worked. I've been a fireman for about 16 years, 10 of which with this department, and I've never had the opportunity to work in a city that I felt was such a great community influence. I really feel for the first time in my career that I am uh, really part of the community. So I'm happy to be here in Rancho Mirage. And thank you guys for the proclamation. And thank you for having us. I'm Vito Giacalone. I've been uh, here for two weeks now uh, in the city. Uh, yeah. And so um, I'm from San Diego. Uh, I've been in the fire service uh, for about five years now. So enjoy it thus far. Uh, Tim Minnesota. I'm one of the uh, paramedics here for Rancho Mirage. Uh, I work uh, both on the ambulance and on the fire engine, um, providing both fire, rescue, and uh, paramedicine for the citizens. I've been here for two years, um, and I plan to be here for a lot more. So thank you guys again. I'm Oliver Keithley, and uh, like Tim, I'm also a firefighter paramedic at Station 50. Uh, I've been here for one year, and I'm uh, very excited to be here, and absolutely love my job. Hi, and lastly, I'm uh, Eli Vega, firefighter paramedic also. I, I work both stations, Station 69 and Station 50, so still in the city. And uh, I've been here about going on four years, and uh, I love every single year of it. And I just want to say thank you to all the city council and the city for helping us out at the fire stations and giving anything to help us do our job better. And thank you to the citizens. Thank you guys very much. And we, uh, it's a privilege to serve you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. It's always nice to know we're in such good hands with these guys, believe me. Okay. All right. All right, now we're gonna move on to the non-agenda public comments. And this is the opportunity for the public to speak on items not on the agenda. And as a reminder, please limit your comments to three minutes. Please begin by stating your name and city of residence. And I do have a few people who would like to speak. Alan Worthy. Well, I thought I was in the middle, but thank you for having me. Uh, I'm Alan Worthy. Uh, I'm here with some big and unfortunate news. Uh, this is a copy of the press release that I circulated to the Desert Sun and to the uh, news affiliates here. 
Uh, I, Thomas Allen Worthy, actor, director, producer, will personally appear at the Rancho Mirage Council meeting on Thursday, October the 5th, to demand the resignations of the following parties at Eisenhower Medical Center. President and CEO Aubrey Zerfling, Executive VP COO Martin Massicelio, pardon the pronunciation, it's not correct, Chief Counsel Michael Appelhans, and Director of Risk Management Celine Kaiser. I will also demand that the Board of Trustees at Al be reshuffled. Please note that third party attorney Phil Weiss has been escalated for trial at the California State Bar. Uh, the crux of the matter is this letter sent to me by Celine Kaiser the Director of Risk Management, and the last sentence reads as follows. We request that you do not call, come to my office, the rehab clinic, or send any for, uh, additional documents with regard to this matter. Well, needless to say, that led to a host of problems, uh, not the least of which is that it's illegal. It's one thing to defend the hospital, it's quite another to break federal laws in so doing which is what they have done from day one, and it continues today. Uh, proof of their MO is when the Desert Sun finally covered something negative with regard to Eisenhower. Hospital sued over alleged sexual assault. Uh, the newspaper bothered to cover this last June, but what's pertinent is the first paragraph. Uh, the lawsuit states that saying that Eisen the Rancho Mirage Hospital failed to act responsibly well, that, again, seems to be their modus operandi. Uh, this insurance company nationwide was involved in this nightmare that I have been through. And because of Ms. Kaiser's letter and Chief Counsel Michael Appelhans shutting me down, uh, I have just last week finally received the smallest of settlement. So in other words, you know, they blew, off, blew me off for so long, they ran the statute by failing to cooperate. So they have also ruined my credit, and they've also themselves not been paid. The doctors haven't been paid. Uh, this is not what we expect from Eisenhower. I don't have to say that you know, I'm preaching to the choir at this point. This is not what we expect. It's not what we respect from our world-class resort city, Palm Springs, as we all know, gone over the third world cliff. And as I'm trying to track down my stolen Mercedes, and I was in that haze, you will all recall, I believe, between here and Cathedral City, where my car was towed, and the corrupt city of Palm Springs, I spoke to Lieutenant Julio Luna, and he said, Mr. Worthy, didn't you say you were at Eisenhower? And I said, yes. He said, the crime of fraud took place at Eisenhower. <clears throat> so I have constantly and had to continually trace it back to Eisenhower, to no avail. So I've lost my Mercedes, paid for, and I've lost my home with a paid for loan because they foreclosed on the lien, which I could not pay after this travesty that took place. The only bank account I had left was frozen. Okay? This is not okay. I'm demanding for our all own good that they all resign uh, and I will continue to appear here once a month until they do so. Every one of the people that I named off in closing on this press release, I have either dealt with, who have screamed at me and slammed down the phone, if you can believe it, or chosen to ignore my phone calls. That would be Mr. Appelhans, who again is in front of the bar. So I do appreciate your time and your support that I have felt here over the last couple of years as I've been couch surfing, renting a room, and now I am once again homeless. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen. Next to speak will be Evelyn Green, please. Thank you for having me. I, my husband and I have lived for 51 years on Model Circle in Rancho Mirage. We were there before we were incorporated into a city, so we're old historians around here. We love our city, we love our country, we love people, but we're passionate about Rancho Mirage, Rancho Mirage not becoming a sanctuary city because we believe in honoring, obeying, and sustaining the laws of our land which protect us. And we're very passionate about are hoping your wisdom of not allowing 
the beautiful, wonderful city of Rancho Mirage to be a sanctuary city. And I would have many more people with me today if I had more time to notice that we have been on vacation. I didn't know about the meeting today, but if we need to bring more people back, we will. But thank you very much. Thank you, Evelyn. Next will be uh, Marilyn Arcadia. Hi, Marilyn. Hi there. Good afternoon, City Council. Um, I'm here with a good story. Um, I am an animal advocate, as I think most of you know. On Sunday night, there was a dog that was barking. It started around uh, maybe 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and I live right by the wash in San Jacinto Villas. It was barking constantly, and so I figured it was in someone's yard. And as uh, the barking continued, it proceeded to move down to the right as I looked at the wash, down to the right. So now I'm thinking this is not in someone's yard. Um, I had dinner over at Mary Lou's, and I got a knock on the door saying, Marilyn, this dog is somewhere down in the wash. It's caught and, and can't get out. And to make a long story short, it was Sunday, so I called Animal Control, which connected me to Riverside. Riverside called me back. We had a discussion. They determined that the dog was not hurting, so they would bring a um, humane trap out the next day, Monday. Two days later, I was driving, I was on patrol in our, one of our cop COP cars, and I was on San Jacinto heading to the car wash, and there was a dog, a big brown dog, and he was crossing San Jacinto and going into the empty lots. Um, you could tell that he was in distress. I proceeded to call code enforcement right away. I told them the situation, and then when I got to the wash, I called, I um, emailed, followed it up with an email. I had the cop car washed, the beautiful, by the way, car that we appreciate and pr proud of and we thank you for. Um, that was about 20 minutes. When I came out of the car wash, there were not one or two, but three code enforcement tr vehicles. All three people were out on the street. Two were parked on San Jacinto. One was pulled over on 111, and they were out there with catch poles. Now, I don't know if they were able to catch the dog or not, but I want to tell you, this is what our city does. This is what we follow through. As an animal advocate, I cannot tell you how pleased I was to see the action that was taking place so quickly. So I want to thank you. I want to thank you for pro providing us with those kind of people and with the equipment to do it. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Marilyn. Very nice of you to do that and come and tell us. Next, we'll have Mr. Michael Potts from our fabulous Rancho Mirage Chamber of Commerce. Hello, Michael. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Wanted to give you an update on several things that are happening at the Chamber of Commerce. First of all, the Taste of Summer, which is uh, concluded for this year, the second year we have done this with restaurants in Rancho Mirage. We sold over 1,600 wristbands to people to go out to the local restaurants and sample drinks and appetizers and desserts. And all of the proceeds, over $16,000, went to the local charities. So that's a great, great event, and we're looking forward to doing it again next year. We've spent the whole summer working on a new project that we're calling the Rancho Mirage Chamber Block Party, which will be held October 24th from 5 to 8 in the Rancho Mirage Chamber parking lot between there and Perch. We have local restaurants, we have vendors, we have lots of fun. We also have a dog costume contest with the proceeds going to Animal Samaritans. So we hope that we can see a lot of you there. That should be an awful lot of fun. Also, please mark your calendars for January 29th. That's going to be the Rammy Awards, which will be at um, the show at, Rancho, at um, Agua Caliente. And this year we are uh, changing things up a bit. We're going to be naming the Distinguished Citizen Award after a very prominent local uh, distinguished citizen. So that will be a lot of fun. I hope you can be there for that. On the 25th of the month, uh, of this month, we're going to be having our third Business Over Breakfast event, which will be at Cambria on El Paseo. 
Uh, they've been very, very successful for local businesses to learn different things. Um, this, it starts at 7.30 in the morning, and this one, and amazingly enough, this was planned before this past weekend, but it's, the topic is active shooter, how to protect yourself, staff, and customers. So we uh, highly recommend any businesses or individuals that want to get some information to come out to that. Again, 7.30 uh, on Wednesday the 25th. Also in the afternoon of the 25th, from 5.30 to 7.30, we're partnering with Thousand Palms Chamber of Commerce, and we're going to be doing a mixer at the Rancho Mirage High School in their culinary department. And culinary arts program is, is doing the food there. It's going to be an awful lot of fun tasting some of the food that the students have prepared. So if you have an opportunity to come out to that, that would be great as well. Uh, also, we've been averaging new membership it, between eight and 10 new members every month wow. for the year. So that's been great. And so the chamber is growing leaps and bounds, and we're looking forward to continuing that. If anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them for you. Well, that's all because of the wonderful leadership. What can I tell you? It's the membership for sure. You guys are doing sure. great. Really, very proud of you guys. Thank you. Any anybody questions? Anybody have any questions of Michael? Thank you very much. Right, thank you, Michael. Appreciate that. Next, we have Dr. Dubrieve. Would like to speak? My topic, honorable members of the most beautiful city, the best organized city. But this city, unfortunately, doesn't seem to know what's happening. What is happening, we are losing our country. And I stress those words because I know what I'm talking about. Raul Ruiz opened up California. Any illegal is welcome here. That's why you might have heard about these people that are bringing people who are not wanted in their countries for a fee, $12,000. I have about 20 of them right next door to my house. My house has been vandalized by one single person, no less than 40 times, and I cannot find relief because the city of Cathedral City decided not to answer my calls. I live by myself, and as you can see, I am not a youth, and I need that protection because I know I pay, I pay my dues, my taxes are always paid on time and everything, and yet the chief of police decided not to provide me with any services. Mr. Herrera, which is one of the officers there, told me that he had been ascended to lieutenant because of the miserable way in which he has treated me. I want everyone to know we are losing our country. This is not a joke. I want you to go by Vista Chino around 6 o'clock at night, 6.30. You'll see one car after the other. They don't even stop for the signals because they don't have to. They have VIPs in their cars, all these illegals. One car stopped and insulted me in an awful manner just two days ago because I was outside of my house. Please look into it. We have a great country, and we want this country to continue to be. We're not handing out California to any illegals. Thank you very much. Thank you, dear. Anybody else in the audience who did not fill out a card who wishes to speak? You can come up now if you want. All right, seeing none, then we will move along. Now we'll move along to council comments, and I will start with Mr. Richard Kite. Thank you, Mayor, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. And the season has certainly begun. And one of the best events that's coming up shortly will be the Rancho Mirage Art Fair. This is the 17th fair that uh, we've had in a long time as we've been one of the major users of the park. And on November 4th and November 5th, that's Saturday and Sunday, we'll have the affair. 
this is really uh, to kick off the, the Valley's festival season. We're going to have each day open at around 9 o'clock in the morning. And there will be about 75 artists that will be showing their wares. On both days, we'll have entertainment in the amphitheater beginning at 2 p.m. On Saturday, we're going to have Chase Huna, who will be on his uh, saxophone. And then Saturday afternoon, the Le Leo Taza band will play at 4 o'clock. On Sunday, the lineup will be the Smooth Brothers, followed by Jose Neto Band. And of course, uh, individuals can bring chairs if they like. Uh, they will be able to sit up on the lawn using blankets or their own chairs. So we'll have chairs there for individuals. Food and beverages will also be available for purchase throughout the day from Wally's Desert Turtle, Aqua Paza, uh, or Aqua California Bristro, uh, Brandini Toffee, E&E &E Pels, and there'll be beer, wine, soda, and water available through the Ranch Mirage Rotary Club. So as usual, the Art of Fair is free, and parking also is free. So we look forward to having you all come out. It should be a great event. This is the 17th and should be the best one of the, of the group, and we're certainly going to have a great opportunity to see entertainment on the amphitheaters. So come out and have a great time. Remember, that's Saturday and Sunday, and that's uh, November 4th and 5th. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Richard. Tana. <clears throat> yes, just, <clears throat> just uh, briefly, I wanted to uh, <clears throat> commend our road surfacing crew who have been uh, resurfacing our, our roads over the past uh, couple of weeks. Uh, I think they've done a marvelous job in uh, keeping traffic moving and the road surfaces. Uh, well, as somebody once said, when you leave Rancho Mirage, uh, you know it. And that's because of, these, of the road surfacing ingredients we use. But the crew that's been doing all of this and keeping traffic under check and all of that I uh, certainly deserve a uh, commendation, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Dana. Ted, your turn. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yesterday was um, a lot of fun and one that we look forward to every year. Uh, maybe some of you were there. I know a number of the people from the city. Uh, and it's uh, coffee with a cop. And it took place uh, at Starbucks at the Rancho Los Palmas Shopping Center. Uh, a number of the officers were there, uh, Lieutenant Shields, Sergeant <coughs> Myers. Uh, and they're just a fabulous, fabulous group of people. We're very fortunate uh, law enforcement that are assigned to Rancho Mirage, indeed, just like the fire department said before. Uh, they feel they're part of the fabric of the city and indeed that's the way we feel about them uh, so we're most appreciative for their dedication uh, also yesterday uh, i'm pleased to say that uh, councilman uh, hobart and myself and the director of economic development and marketing sean smith uh, met with the weston hotel uh, and we were uh, most pleased to be able to announce that we have agreed to extend our uh, our Rancho Mirage golf club arrangement for an additional two years. Uh, one of the great benefits, of course, of uh, our local uh, owners is that they have a three-day advanced reservation privilege versus the rest of the public or non rancher Mirage residents of four days. So it's a great benefit. Uh, our golfers are appreciative of it, and uh, uh, we're pleased with the relationship uh, with the uh, Weston Resort. Uh, by now, a number of you have received the Rancher Mirage uh, Fall uh, Rancher Mirage Insider uh, mailing in your mailbox. And by the way, congratulations, Sean, on the great job that you and your staff did. It just looks terrific. 
Uh, and it focuses on the uh, wonderful outdoor activities available in our city. Rancho Mirage prides itself on the many great amenities that we have, and after a long, hot summer, we finally are making the transition to the cooler fall temperatures. Depending on your pleasure, there are several parks to choose from. Rancho Mirage Dog Park will be closed during October, but uh, for maintenance, but, but again open in November for you and your four-legged friends. The community park offers tennis, pickleball, basketball, racquetball, exercise stations, and plenty of playground equipment for the children. Wolfson Park, the Cancer Survivors Park, Blixith Park, and Magnesia Falls Mini Park are great opportunities for a more sincere, since serene experience. Speaking of serene experiences, Sunnylands Center and Gardens offers one of the best. Uh, visitors can stroll uh, through the professionally designed gardens, participate in bird watching tours, do yoga, or a number of other activities, many of which are free of charge. For those that enjoy biking and hiking, we have over 50 miles of bicycle lanes and several hike, hiking trails. When you hear people referencing biking, um, we have it here. We have wonderful 50 miles of trails right in our city. Uh, the last but not least, there are a host of outdoor events taking place in the next few months in and around our great city, with quite a few planned in our beautiful amphitheater uh, and Rancho Mirage Community Park. Uh, Councilman Kite reviewed the uh, art affair that is coming up uh, in a short period of time. It's one of our signature events of the year. So we look forward to all of you participating in these acti activities. We're pleased to be able to provide what we consider a terrific amenity package done in a first-class manner for our residents. Thank you. Thank you, Ted. Iris. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I do have a couple of announcements and uh, some things that you may want to make a note on your calendar about. Uh, first of all, the Rancho Mirage Flu Shot Clinic is going to be taking place on Wednesday, October 25th at, from the city, and it will be offering a flu shot free of charge for our seniors that are 60 years young or a little bit older. The clinic will be held at the Rancho Mirage Library beginning at 8 a.m. and continuing until the doses run out, but no later than 10 a.m. Seniors need to provide evidence of their senior status and Rancho Mirage residency to get the free flu shot. And the city will also provide financial su support to the Jocelyn Center in Palm Desert, and they will also be having free flu shots there on the very same day, October 25th from 9 a.m. until noon. So if you can't make the city's flu shot clinic, please visit the Jocelyn Center, and for more information, please contact City Hall at 760-324-4511. And moving on to another announcement. This is about our great California shakeout drill. And as you can see on the screen, this is something we take very seriously. It is held once a year, and the city will be participating this year on Thursday, October 19th at 8.30 a.m. This earthquake drill is practiced by millions of people and staff members at City Hall and the library will be participating by conducting the drop, cover, and hold on earthquake drill, and then briefly evacuating the building as part of the simulation. Each year, as I say, millions of people participate in this important <coughs> earthquake drill, and we certainly encourage our residents and to take the opportunity to think about their own earthquake preparedness. Uh, do you have enough food and water for up to seven days? Do you have a communications plan with your loved ones? Uh, and to learn about more 
ways to participate in preparation, please visit the city's website or you may go directly to ranchomiragepreparedness.org. And I must say that, um, as you know, we do take this very seriously because it's not just earthquakes, it's uh, rainstorms, it's um, all the things that happen in cities where we have to be aware of fires, uh, even chemical spills that might take place on our rails or on our freeways. Um, last year, la pardon me, last week we had a uh, wonderful presentation by two law enforcement officers at our Emergency Preparedness Commission meeting. And their topic was, if you see something, say something. And of course, now more than ever, we have become more and more aware of how important awareness is. Um, I know people are very hesitant sometimes to be alarmed about something, but according to both of these officers, <clears throat> law enforcement would rather investigate a hundred different calls than hear someone say, you know, I should have mentioned something to someone because I did see things. And once something is mentioned to the enforcement officers, they will investigate and they will start a file. And if there is a second person that makes a call of concern, the file will continue. And these investigations are taken seriously. But if we don't say something, then these incidences or these episodes uh, are not transmitted to our law enforcement. So just be aware. I know we keep reminding you about things, uh, but the most important thing in Rancho Mirage for its residents and its visitors is safety. And a lot of people comment to me that they love watching Rancho Mirage television, and they always say, it's so good that you keep reminding us because we know we can pick up brochures at the library, at City Hall, and at the Art Affair. But it's good to have a reminder because these reminders do sink in and they do make us more attentive to what's going on. So be prepared and uh, report something that might be suspicious to you. And moving on to another item, um, we speak often about the many great activities that occur at our Rancho Mirage Public Library, and rightfully so. Our library is home to a fantastic variety of events and programs throughout the year. And we can have up on our screen, because there's a lesser known gem in our Rancho Library that deserves a lot more attention, and that is a collection of well over a digital resources. In fact, you will probably be surprised at the variety of resources available. And according to our executive director of the library, David Bryant, there's well over a million opportunities to um, enhance your brain power and have a good time at the same time. Um, many of these uh, programs can be accessed through a mobile device, such as your smartphone or the tablet. And library card holders can play games to keep their minds sharp, learn new languages, get online tutoring, learn about other cultures, access legal forms, or find out more about their own heritage. So uh, one can also search newspaper articles, access ebooks and e audiobooks, magazines, and even movies. So if you haven't done so already, I certainly encourage you to explore these resources, and they're all available with the free library card. So for more information regarding digital resources at the Rancho Mirage Public Library, please visit www.ranchomiragelibrary.org. And should you have any questions, please feel free to contact the library staff they are very friendly, they're very helpful, and they'll lead you in the right direction, whatever your questions might be. 760-341-7323 is their number. 341-7323. And we hope you'll take the opportunity to enhance your brain power and have fun while you're doing it.
Thank you so much, and thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Charlie. Iris. Charlie. Yes, sir. Can I, can I just add yes, a sure. PS to my? Uh, I just wanted to reemphasize what Ted had talked about. We um, met with the Western people, as he indicated, and we have uh, renegotiated the golf package uh, that the members of the Rancho Mirage City Golf Club uh, can have. If you're members of the Rancho Mirage City Golf Club, <clears throat> which you become by uh, coming to City Hall and registering for it, and uh, that one of the great advantages, probably the biggest advantage of the package, is that if you're a member of the uh, Ranch Mirage City Golf Club, you can make reservations four days in advance for your tea time. The rest of the public can only make it three days in advance. So we get one extra day on all of the public. And for those golfers who uh, are, generally speaking, interested in the time and <clears throat> where they, what time they tee off on a given day, that extra day is an extremely important uh, part of the package. And I just wanted to emphasize that so that uh, our residents would have a greater incentive to join our golf club. Thanks. That's a very good point, Dana. How many years has that been going on? I forgot. Goodness gracious, it uh, goes back to back. around uh, 06, 05, something right, like that. Right, yeah. yeah. Okay. Really great, great program. Well, I'm going to go back to Iris and, and dovetail off of the, the, uh, the library. And I'm going to announce the new guide of programs and exhibits for the library. Included in information on musical acts, art presentations, workshops, on publishing and pottery sessions with authors, lectures, film, exhibits, programming for kids and families, and the upcoming book sale. So there's a lot going on. The amount of quality activities and programming that occurs at our fantastic library is truly incredible, is what Iris showed you. And I'm just continuing on here. All of it is available with a free library card. I think it's one of the most busiest <laughs> places to go in Rancho Mirage. Can't get in the parking lot sometimes, David, but you're doing a, gr a great job. If you would like a copy of the new guide, and there's a picture of it right there, and it's right here, very, very, very handy guide, and you can flip through it. It has everything outlined beautifully. It's available at the library and at City Hall and can be viewed or downloaded on the library webpage, as Ira says, and that's ranchomiragelibrary.org. So with that, I think we have done all of the comments from the council. Now we'll move on to the approval of the special meeting minutes of September 19th, 2017. Are there any corrections to the minutes from anybody? Is everything standing good? If so, I will call for a motion, please, for acceptance. So moved. Second. Second. Please vote. Motion passes 5-0. Thank you, Christy. Next to the consent calendar, I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Randy Binder, our city manager. Randy, will you please introduce the consent items? Excuse Sir? me, uh, yeah. Mr. Binder, before you start, I just wanted to uh, ask you if you would pull item number four, because I will be recusing myself on that vote. Certainly. So I'll go through the other eight items on consent, and Thank then you. you can vote separately on that. Very Thank good. You. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mr. All right, Mayor, you. members of the City Council, good afternoon. You have nine items on your consent calendar, except number four is polled. Item number one is to a full reading of the ordinances that would be introduced or adopted pursuant to today's agenda. And if you don't want to approve that, Isaiah Hagerman can read each one in full. <laughs> Someday, someday, I'm telling you, he's got to do it. Well, it's up to you because you're, you're voting. Item number, two, item number two on your consent calendar is second reading of a uh, ordinance that would amend the Monterey specific plan, removing 10 acres from the specific plan area. This is north of uh, Versailles. Uh, Mina Dukic made the presentation at your last council meeting. Uh, 10 acre uh, single story office. Professional, professional Medical Office Campus. <laughs> Item number three on your consent calendar is second reading for the general plan and zoning map amendment for the same project, changing the zoning from RM to office on the same 10 acre site. Item number four on your consent calendar is pulled. Item number five 
on consent is second reading of the commercial preferential parking uh, program in Title 10, that's Chapter 10 of the Municipal Code. Uh, Jeremy Glein put this together. Uh, it would allow special parking for employees that work in businesses along Duncan Emmons Road, the frontage road, while leaving spaces available for customers. Mm -hmm. At second reading, and then item number six on your consent calendar is a um, requirement for a debt, debt management policy per Senate Bill 1029, and this would be a joint resolution of the City Council and the uh, Board of Directors of the Housing Authority or the Council acting in the capacity as a housing authority, and then also the Council acting in the capacity as the successor agency to the former redevelopment agency and the Library Board as well and the Community Services District and the Joint Powers uh, Financing Authority, collectively referred to as the Board of Directors and Affiliated Agencies. Item number seven on your consent calendar is an extension of completion request for track 30150. Bill Linus, our city engineer, put this uh, together. This is a tract on the east, on the east side of uh, Vista Dunes, just north of um, the Armenian Church. Uh, the developer is in the midst of doing the public improvements and the private improvements. If you've driven by, you might see this new street there and new landscaping along uh, the frontage on Vista Dunes as well as Monterey Avenue. I think that's been started already as well. Uh, this would allow the applicant to extend the completion date uh, to April 9th, 2018. Uh, Mr. Enos feels that it'll be done well before that, but that would allow plenty of time to get it completed. This is three estate, residential estate lots on 4.4 acres in the RE residential estate zone. That's the land use pattern in that neighborhood. Uh, item number eight on your consent calendar uh, is a request from Library Director David Bryant to close the library for six days uh, to accommodate the Ranch Mirage Writers Festival. That would be from January 22nd through January 27th. That's a Monday through Saturday, January 22nd to the 27th, 2018. Uh, it would close the library two days before the Writers' Festival starts and keep it closed one day afterwards to allow for staff to adequately basically transform the library into a world-class uh, venue for the Writers' Festival. I believe this is the fifth annual Writers' Festival that would be held at the library. And as a reminder, Fridays and Saturdays are the lowest um, um, in-person use days for the library itself in terms of uh, public traffic and checking out followed by Thursday. So three of the six days are the slowest. Uh, and as a reminder, the library would remain open electronically uh, during all of that, uh, all of those periods. The things that you talked about, Mr. Mayor, and the other, um, the other programs that the library offers. And if you check out a book or a CD or anything else, uh, before that time, you'll get an extra week because nothing will be due during that time. So, Britt, you might want to go over there and fill <laughs> up your bag. Get an extra week for free with your free library card. And I'm not picking on you. I just looked over that way. <laughs> that is uh, number eight. And then number nine, Mr. Mayor, Yes. It, our demands. And we are here to answer any questions. And then we'll go back to number four, please. Thank you, Randy. Any members of the public wish to speak on any of the items that were just read? All right, seeing none. Yes, would you like to speak? Mr. Bean, Bean? yes. I'd like to get some feedback from every member because what I am telling you, I'm not just alarming this group. It's really happening. And if you don't believe me, just be on Mr. Chino at about 6.30. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? All right, seeing none, do we have any comments from the council? Any questions? All right, then let's see. I will make a motion to approve the consent calendar except for item number four as presented. Is there a second? Second. Please vote. 
Mr. Mayor, motion passes 5-0. Very good. Randy, would you please okay. introduce item number four? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Item number four is a uh, request for the uh, second reading of an ordinance that would establish a community choice aggregation program pursuant to the Public Utilities Code uh, for the City of Ranch Mirage. Um, the city has developed an implementation plan, and this is the next step in the process. Uh, it doesn't bind us to um, create the uh, CCA, uh, but it's the next step in the process. If you have further detailed questions, uh, Isaiah Hagerman can answer them. But this is second reading. You went into this in detail at a previous meeting. Very and, good. And Mr. Mayor, before the council takes action on it, the record should reflect that um, council member Smotrich's potential conflict of interest is based on her substantial investments with Southern California Edison. Thank you, Steve. Any members of the public wish to speak on item number four? All right, seeing none. Any council comments or questions? All right, seeing none. Then I will make a motion to approve item number four as presented. Is there a second, please? So moved. Please vote. Motion passes 4 0. Thank you, Chris. Moving on, is there a CV Link update? Nothing. Thank you. Nothing today, uh, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Dana. Now we'll move to public hearings. The first public hearing is for CFD annexation number 173. Britt Wilson will present the staff report. Britt, it's all yours. Good afternoon, Honorable Mayor and City Council. The uh, CFD annexation before you today is the standard process and procedures that, that the city follows for all development within the city. This is a, the second and last step of the CFD annexation process. The first step was considered and approved by the City Council at your September 19th meeting. The territory proposed for annexation is located on the west side of Vista del Sol and east of Burton Drive, just south of the Betty Ford Center. On September 19th, 2017, the City Council did adopt Resolution 2017-32, the Resolution of Intention, which declared your intention to annex this uh, territory to the CFD District. As detailed in that resolution, the uh, petition or application, if you will, filed by the owner allows for shortening of time of this special election to expedite the annexation process and waives any requirements for notice, analysis, and arguments in connection with the election. As such, the public hearing today on this proposed annexation and the proposed levy of the special tax may take place at uh, one fell swoop today. Uh, so the City Council will be conducting the public hearing today. City Clerk, uh, when I complete here, she can report on the uh, election results. At the conclusion uh, of today's public hearing, the Council can consider the attached resolution which calls for the election, declares the results of that election, and approves the annexation of the territory to CFD number one. So with that, I will turn it over to the City Clerk, and then we'll go back to you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Do any council members have questions of staff at this time? Richard? Uh, Brett? Mike? Brett, I have a question regarding the uh, total fee, which shows on page 11 2, uh, 392 22 per house. Yes. Does that reflect in the calculations on page 11 13 mm -hmm. under proposed tax, item number six? that page okay. 11 13 um, are you speaking or where are you asking where is the 392 22 showing up on that yes is that, that would be on the page 14 actually it's step six in the calculation process and so uh, midway there on the page under step six you'll see residential <laughs> The incremental cost, admin charges, the total assessment, $392.22. And that okay. is subject to an annual uh, reconciliation with past charges, and so right. it gets adjusted every year, up or down. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Mr. Mayor, may yes. I read the election results? Yes, you may. Thank you. So the ballot for the six... Wait, Chrissy, I didn't open it to the uh, public hearing first. I think that's what I have on my agenda here. 
Okay. I'll read the election results as part of his staff report, okay. and then you can go ahead and open the poll. Okay. 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 So the the ballot for the six eligible votes was received on September 25th, 2017, and was in favor. Therefore, all votes cast equal 100% of total eligible votes, and no protests were received. Very good. Thank you. Now then, I will open it to any buddy from the public which to speak on this subject. All right, seeing none, do any members of the public wish to speak regarding this item? No, I will close the public hearing. Do any council members have any comments on this item? All right, seeing none, I will make a motion to adopt resolution number 2017 next in order, calling an election on levying a special tax within the area proposed to be annexed to the Community <coughs> Facilities District, number one, annexation number 173, declaring results of the election, approving the annexation of the territory, and directing recording of the amendment of notice of special tax lien. Is there a second, please? Second. Please vote. Mr. Mayor, motion passes 5-0. Very good. We will now move on to number 12, which is the public hearing for CFD annexation number 174. Mr. Wilson is back on deck. We'll also present the staff report. Good afternoon again, Honorable Council. Uh, I'll save the background on the uh, process of this since we just went over that. This particular territory proposed for annexation is located at the northeast corner of Diner Shore Drive in Los Alamos. This is the Pulte Home Project, uh, of which you are all familiar. Uh, the, on September 19th, the City Council adopted Resolution 2017-33, it's Resolution of Intention, declaring your intention to annex this territory into CFD number one. Uh, as detailed in that resolution, the petition or application filed by the owner allows for the shortening of the time frame, as I mentioned in the last staff report, so I won't repeat all that. So you will conduct the public hearing. Uh, I will be turning this over to the city clerk. She will report on the results of the election. At the conclusion of the public hearing, you may consider the resolution which calls for the election, declares the results of the special tax election, and approves the annexation of the territory to C uh, Community Facilities District Number 1. So with that, I will turn it over to Ms. Ramos. Thank you, Britt. So the ballot for the 132 eligible votes was received on September 26, 2017, and was in favor. Therefore, all votes cast equal 100% of total eligible votes. And again, no protests were received. Thank you, Chrissy. Thank you, Britt. Do any council members have any questions of the staff on this item? All right. Now I'll open up to the public hearing. Anybody wish to speak on this item? All right. I will close the public hearing. Do any council members have any further comments on this item? All right, seeing none, I will make a motion to adopt resolution number 2017 next in order, calling an election on levying a special tax within the area proposed to be annexed to Community Facilities District number one, annexation number 174, declaring results of the election, approving the annexation of the territory and directing recording of the amendment of the notice of special tax lien. Is there a second? Please vote. Thank you. Motion passes 5-0. All righty. Moving on to number 13 is a public hearing regarding a tentative trap map extension time. In uh, Mina Dutchett, our associate planner will present the staff report. Thank you and good afternoon, Mr. Mayor and council members. Uh, I will be presenting the request for two tentative ma tract map extensions in one presentation, so items 13 and 14. As these two maps are in the same vicinity and have the same applicant, but there will be uh, a separate public hearing opened for each map extension. Both of the original maps were approved on July 31st, 2014 by the Council and both are requesting their second one-year time extensions. The applicant's request is due to the fact that they are unable to develop the property due to ongoing infrastructure projects that are being conducted by the Water District. The applicant is unable to move forward with the project until the Water District completes their improvements. We contacted the Water District for comment on the proposed extension and were informed that they anticipate a project completion date of December 2017. 
Senator Tract Map 36621 is located at the northeast corner of Ginger Rogers Road and Via Josefina. Tentative Tract Map 36622 is located on the northwest corner of Via Florencia and Via Josefina, both in Section 30. <clears throat> both of the subject sites are zoned as very low density residential and are surrounded by residential zoning. This slide shows the tentative map design for tentative tract map 36621. The design of the subdivision is typical of other five acre subdivisions within the vicinity in that it's comprised of a private street that extends through the center of the project and provides access to each lot. Lots B and C on the shown slide indicate retention basins that are designed to capture surface runoff from the subdivision. This displayed slide shows the tentative map design for tentative tract map 36622. The map is similar in design to the previously shown map as well as other maps within the vicinity. It's comprised of nine lots with a private street providing access to each lot. Lots B and C indicate retention basins that are designed to capture surface runoff from the subdivision. The landscape plans are designed in accordance with Section 30 guidelines and utilize drought tolerant and climate appropriate landscaping. Canopy trees line both private streets, creating a decorative feature for future development. Staff has not received any outside correspondence or comments regarding the proposed extensions. Staff is recommending that the City Council approves a one year extension of time for tentative tract map 36621 and tentative tract map number 36622 subject to the conditions and findings in the associated staff reports. That concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to address any questions. Thank you, Madam. Uh, let me ask a question. What are the lot sizes for this project? They range for tract map 36621 from about 16,000 square feet to about 19,000 square feet, and 36622 are all about 15,000 square feet. Very good, good size, thank you. Do any council members have questions of staff on this item? I have one question. Richard? The, um, the original date of approval on this project goes back to 2014, and, and we've had one extension on it so far, is that correct? Yes, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Kite. The original approval was for two years, and then they did a one-year extension of time. This is their second one-year extension, so they have one left that they are able to apply for. That's the current one that they're applying for right now, and after this one, then there are no further extensions? They have one more if this um, application is approved. Okay. And we're pretty well assured that the water situation will allow them to meet that uh, timeline? We're hoping so. They gave us a completion date of December 2017. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman. Charlie. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm wondering, Randy, uh, can anybody here remind me of whether uh, Ginger Rogers is intended to go straight through to Monterey or whether it doesn't go all the way through? Doesn't go all the way through. And where does it stop? Stops at uh, Via Josefina, and uh, then it goes north and south from there. Well, I'm. Did, it did stops at. Well, it doesn't. I see. In other words, you're saying there is no roadway behind this project. Yes, that's correct. Right. And uh, Ginger Rogers stops right here at the beginning of this project. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're Thank you. Any further questions of council? All right, I'll open it to the public. Any questions on this subject? All right, seeing none, I will call for a motion. Ted, would you like to make this motion, please? You're invited. Well, thank you for the invitation, Mayor. You're welcome. Uh, I'll make a motion that the city council approve a one year extension of time for tentative track map. 36621 TTM 2 X 36621 subject to the conditions of approval and based on the findings and content in the attached staff report. Okay. Is there a second on this one? I second it. All right. Also, I assume that number 14 was included in the minus presentation of 13. So we're going to vote on 14 again also, right? So it's 13 to 14. So, Ted, I need another motion, please. Well, do we? 
Actually, it would be better if you just did the uh, vote on this one motion and then have another motion for item 14. Okay. Correct. So we have a motion and a second, so now we need to vote on item number 13. Okay, everybody please vote on 13, All right? Okay. And motion passes 5-0. All right, now, Chrissy, we're going to move to 14? Correct. And we're going to vote on that. Does Ted need to? Need, we would need to open the public hearing for that one. Okay. And go through that process and then okay. ask for a motion. Anybody in the public wish to speak on item number 14? All right, seeing none. Any more council comments on 14? Seeing none, I will turn it over to Ted. Close the hearing. And I'll close the hearing on the public. Well, uh, Mr. Mayor, are you referencing the the staff report number on 14? Yes. Because yeah. that really, uh, has that been fully uh, explored and presented? Can I answer that? Yes, you may. Uh, yes, um, in her zest for efficiency, <laughs> uh, our associate was, planner well, made well. one presentation for both of these items. Uh, if you'd like to hear this particular one again, um, I'm sure she'd be happy to do it, but it's essentially a five-acre parcel into nine lots, and it's the second one-year extension. The original approval was three years ago. The approval was for two years. You've granted a one-year extension. This is the second one-year extension. The average lot size is 15,000 square feet, I believe, and Ginger Rogers terminates at the western boundary of this site. Well, I moved the previous question then. <laughs> Are we going to vote on that? And, and I'll Are make we voting on it, Randy? I'll make the motion <clears throat> yes, unless the please, director yeah, of administrative yeah. services would like to read it. Uh, barring that, the city council approve a one-year extension of time for tenant of track 36 622 TTM 2 X 36 622, subject to the conditions of approval and based on the findings and contents in the attached staff report. Is there a second, please? Second. Please vote. Now we're moving to 15. Yep. Okay. Mayor Pro Tem Kite, would you please enter your vote one more time? And motion passes 5 0. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. We're going to move now to number item 15. And item number 15 is a public hearing for zoning text, amendment number ZTA17001. Jeremy Gleim, Development Service Director, will present the staff report. There you are. Yes, thank you, Mayor. <laughs> thank you. Um, before I start, I'd like to thank um, Mayor Pro Tem Kite and Councilmember Hobart for their guidance on this topic at the subcommittee level. I'd also like to thank Steve Quintanilla and his team for uh, his contributions to this, uh, to this proposed zoning tax amendment. Uh, so with that, the purpose of this zoning text amendment is to remedy discrepancies that currently exist in the municipal code with regard to recreational vehicles. Um, inconsistencies in the municipal code create enforcement challenges for staff. So when they are identified, we like to get them cleaned up as quickly as possible. In addition to that, staff would like to use this opportunity to introduce the term temporary occupancy vehicle as a replacement for the term recreational vehicle uh, because it covers a broader range of vehicle types. So just real br briefly, I'll go over the three ordinances that comprise this proposed zoning text amendment. The first ordinance would repeal in uh, its entirety, chapter 10.74. A um, little bit of history, in 2002 and 2011, two ordinances were adopted that were intended to supersede chapter 10.74. However, Chapter 10.74 was never formally deleted from the municipal code. And those two ordinances that were adopted um, basically superseded everything that was in Chapter 10.74. So the repeal of Chapter 10.74 would essentially remove all of the existing inconsistencies with regard to recreational vehicles. Uh, the second ordinance would amend Chapter 17.90 of the Zoning Ordinance uh, simply to introduce and define the term temporary occupancy vehicle. And along with that, it would define and uh, introduce a number of um, vehicle types that would fall under that category. And lastly, the third ordinance would amend Section 17.26.080 
of the municipal code in order to replace the term recreational vehicle with the term temporary occupancy vehicle throughout the entire chapter. So that's basically the last step in cleaning up this process. Um, and that's about it. It's just, it really is just a cleanup item. Um, so with that, based upon the content of the staff report, uh, the Planning Commission did rec does recommend that the City Council approve Zoning Text Amendment 17001 and introduce the accompanying ordinances. Um, that concludes my presentation, and I would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Jeremy. Do any council members have any questions on this item? Thank you. Iris? Okay. Um, Jeremy, if you could perhaps go to page 15-5, number 5. Talk, and you can elaborate a little bit about, um, the, it says that the TOV may be temporarily parked on public or private right of way, including a private driveway in front of residences for not more than 48 continuous hours for the purpose of loading and unloading. So that means somebody can have their vehicle parked in front of their own driveway for up to 48 hours? And that's permissible? Yes, that's correct. And that's in the current uh, version of the municipal code. Um, and again, just like it says, it's just to allow people to load and unload either prior to essentially going on a trip or coming home from it. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other further council comments? All right. Seeing none, I'll open up to public hearings. Anybody who wish to speak on this in the public? Come on forward. Would you come, come to on. the microphone, ma'am, please? Thank you. Is Evelyn? Please state your name and where you live again, please. Um, I am Marilyn Arcoli Arcaroli, and I live on San Jacinto Drive, right next to the Rancho Mirage Park. So my question is about, does this apply, Jeremy, to motorhomes? Yes, a motorhome is uh, defined as a temporary occupancy vehicle. Okay, now we currently are told that motorhomes can stay there for 72 hours. And if they move just a few feet, they can stay there for another 72 hours. And I'm referring to on San Jacinto by the park. On the public street? Right. Yeah, and that's part of the existing code as well. Um, Actually, that may have been in the former section. Let me look just real quickly. Um, in the meantime, I can um, just run through the different types of temporary occupancy vehicles. Recreational vehicles is just one category that's recognized by the state, but here are all the, um, the types of vehicles that will be regulated by this ordinance. It'll include campers, camp trailers, fifth wheels, house cars, park trailers, slide-in campers, trailer buses, tent trailers, trailer coaches, and truck campers. Okay. Is there a special issue you're referring to? Yes. <clears throat> you want to tell us about it? Okay. Sure. Um, there is a particular motor home uh, that comes about every three and a half, maybe three weeks, and stays there, and he stays there for anywhere between two, three, and four days. And um, as a private citizen, yeah. as a private citizen, I've spoken to um, one of the sheriffs, and they did say that um, he has 72 hours to stay there. And if he moves it a few feet, then he gets another 72. So it is as if he somehow is arranging to camp there every few weeks. Okay. And there's also another uh, couple of motorhomes that do stay in the parking lot of the park now that we don't have the security 24 hours. Okay. Well, we certainly will look into it and appreciate you okay. giving us that input. Okay. Thank you a Thank lot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. All right. Are we done with public hearings? And I will close it. Do any council members have any further comments on this? No. Seeing none, I will ask for a motion. Anybody wish to make a motion? Iris? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I move that the City Council introduce and read by title only the following three ordinances. A, ordinance number ne uh, next in order, repealing Chapter 10.0. 
74, uh, Recreational Vehicles of Title 10, Vehicles and Traffic of the Rancho Mirage Municipal Code to remove duplicative provisions from the Municipal Code, and B, Ordinance Number Next in Order, Amending Section 17.90.020, Definitions of Specialized Terms and Phrases of Chapter 17.90, Definitions of Title 17, Zoning, of the Rancho Mirage Municipal Code to include the different forms of temporary occupancy vehicles recognized by state law. And C, ordinance number next in order, amending section 17.26.080, parking design standards for residential uses of chapter 17.26, Parking and Loading Standards of Title 17, Zoning of the Rancho Mirage Municipal Code regarding temporary occupancy vehicles. Second. Thank you, Iris. And we have a second. Please vote. Mm -hmm. Motion passes 5-0. Thank you, Chrissy. We'll now move on to the action calendar. Now, item number 16 is an ordinance and resolution regarding short-term rentals. Sean Smith. Director of Economic Development and Marketing. Good afternoon. Thank we'll you, Mayor. We'll present the staff report. Thank you, Mayor. This item was fully presented at your September 19th City Council meeting. However, subsequent to that meeting, we were made aware that the ordinance as presented and uh, first read at that point in time inadvertently prohibited the issuance of short-term rental permits at homes that existed within a community that would allow short-term rentals. That was not the intent of the ordinance. We bring it back to you today in its revised form and the ordinance now incorporates all of the items previously approved as summarized on the screen, but it clarifies that operating, that a property operating as a short-term rental in a community that allows them would qualify for issuance of a permit by the city, assuming that that property was in compliance with all other aspects of the regulation. The second part of this agenda item is a resolution which would, if approved, increase the application fee to $101 and establish a regulatory fee of $294 for the purposes of recouping staff fees associated with regulating and administering the program. And with that, I'm here to answer any questions. I thank you very much. Thank you, Sean. Any members of the public wish to speak on this item? All right, seeing none, are there any questions from council on this item? I have a question. Yes, sir. If I, if I may, I'd particularly to our city council, uh, to our city attorney. Um, with respect to the section that talks about allowing the um, Ranch Mirage uh, officer who is dealing with the public to um, be able to deny a requested permit for a short-term rental, on the basis that the person had previously uh, been issued a uh, uh, violation. Uh, and as I recall, when going through this, there wasn't, uh, there was no time limit on that, and I was wondering if there should be a time limit, uh, and is there any possibility that uh, there could be litigation from any of these provisions uh, against the city, that is meritorious litigation, anybody can file a frivolous lawsuit, but uh, I'm just curious about, uh, primarily about if an application can be denied, uh, and I'm, I think I'm looking at uh, page 16-13 and subsection 13. C. It says a short-term rental certificate application may be denied for the following reasons. And the first reason is if the applicant has had a prior suspend, uh, suspended or revoked uh, rental certificate, suspended or revoked, or has been cited for violating any provision of the code. Um, is that a forever barring or is that um, uh, would, would that be considered overly punitive? Uh, I'm just a little bit It's First curious. of all, it's permissive because we use the term may. 
but um, because we can totally ban these altogether, we have a lot of discretion with respect to how we regulate them. Well, but we don't have we don't have a discretion to be arbitrary, and oh, I know no. you know that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the may doesn't change anything because the may says that the city clerk uh, or the officer attending to the applicant that that person may deny the application because the applicant had a prior short-term rental uh, violation. Uh, I think we should have something in there that limits that, either a prior one in the last two years or five years. Uh, I mean, like, how absurd would it be for us to deny somebody an application, say, wow, you had one 11 years ago, uh, and yeah. so we're going to deny them that? Uh, it, it just seems like it's arbitrary on our part, and if it's arbitrary, then I know that litigation can always follow. Uh, Dana, do you want to uh, pull it, or do you want no. to make an amendment, or what? What should we do, Steve? You can do an amendment. Whatever you, you want. want. You can put it? a limitation yeah. on it. Oh, well, <clears throat> I'll be arbitrary. You had a prior uh, short-term rental suspend, uh, suspended or revoked within the past three years. He's saying five. Um, Randy, what do you yeah, think? At least three. How about four? Four is good. <laughs> How about four and a half? <laughs> okay. right, we, don't, we don't want to appear to have picked this so number arbitrarily. Four calendar years? Okay. No, four years. Right. Four, four times 365 days. Okay, that's that's calendar, calendar years. Year. Calendar years. Just well, to be clear. Yeah. <laughs> what else is there besides a calendar? Fiscal years. And where else do the years? Application year. Okay. A term okay. of the yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right, are there any other questions from council on this item? Wait, right. so hang on, Dana, just, do you want to make a... Well, hang on just... Uh, okay. I just... With respect to... Um, well, let me... Um, I'm looking at page 16-14 at the top. Yeah. It would be paragraph three, a continuation from before. Uh, uh, it says, if there is credible evidence that there are any private governing documents, including without limitation, uh, conditions, covenants, and restrictions, CCNRs, et cetera, um, the word credible uh, is what bothers me there. Uh, credible is easily challenged, yes. and what's credible to one person isn't credible to the other. Uh, but am I correct that the resolution of that issue, whether it's uh, if there's credible evidence of private governing documents, that that decision will be made by the HOA in question as compared to us? No, it'll be made by the person issuing or reviewing the permit application. The, the reason why I use credible is because um, there are a number of, there are some neighborhoods in the community who don't have an official homeowners association, but through the years they've kind of agreed with one another that they will do this or don't do that. Yeah. And we don't want to get stuck in the middle of enforcing those promises, those unwritten promises with one another. <clears throat> Governing documents is a term that's used by the um, state law that deals with homeowners associations and their conditions, covenants, and restrictions in their bylaws. So they use the term co governing documents to mean certain documents that are actually enforceable if they follow certain procedures with respect to adopting them. So I've had um, some neighborhood groups come to me in the past, not only in Rancho Mirage, but other communities, and tell me that, oh no, we've had this promise with one another, or that particular property has a restriction on their property, therefore that was meant to apply to all properties. And so if they bring that information forward, it it would, staff would probably call the city attorney's office and I would determine, well, that's not credible evidence that that particular rule restriction applies to all properties. So basically what 
somebody would have to do if they wanted to um, have an application rejected, they would have to produce bylaws that were formally adopted and, and uh, registered with the Attorney General's Secretary of State's office, or CCNRs that were actually recorded against the properties, or some other governing document that's recognized by, the, by state law as being official and enforceable as against the properties. That's why we use credible evidence. Well, I can understand the rationale for that, and I don't disagree with your explanation of it. Uh, all I know is that at the end of the day, if the applicant who's denied claims that it's not being based on credible evidence, but rather on arbitrary evidence, looking at the same documents we're looking at, uh, how does that get resolved? It's just well, we resolve it by our decision? Yes, yes. On uh, page 16-20, uh, down at C, down at the bottom under violations, it says the subject is prohibited short-term rental use. If credible evidence is presented to the city after issuance of a short-term rental certificate that there are private governing documents, including without limitation, CCNRs that are valid and enforceable pursuant to that certain legislative act as set forth in Civil Code Section 4000 at Sequitur, which prohibit the use of the owner's single family dwelling or condominium for short term rental purposes as defined in this chapter. It says the owner shall have 30 days after being notified of receipt of such evidence by the city to provide written authorization from the owner's homeowner association that allows the owner to continue the use of the owner's property for short term rental purposes. It sounds like in that situation that the HOA would be the one that's presenting the evidence uh, that could counter what the city was saying. And I'm just wondering, is that, is that right? Is that what we're yes, attempting this, to do? Yes, this is correct. I mean, we may have a situation where somebody comes in and submits an application and nobody comes forward or we don't have any information in the file that there were any CCNRs that restrict or prohibit short-term rentals. And then later on, somebody steps forward, the neighbor comes forward, go, wait a minute now. We have a CCNRs, or we just amended our CCNRs. To allow it. Yeah, we, uh, you know, to allow them. Or no, no, to prohibit them. Maybe their CCNRs are, are silent. So the following year, between, uh, during the next following year, the HOA adopts CCNRs that prohibit them, and they come forward with them. And they present that credible evidence. And in that case, we don't want to have this long, drawn-out hearing. We want the ability to just summarily revoke the permit. Steve, uh, in that paragraph, again at the top paragraph on page 16-21, it says, the owner shall have 30 days after being notified of receipt of such evidence by the city to provide written authorization from the owner's HOA that allows the owner to continue to use the owner's property for short-term rental purposes until expiration of the current short-term rental certificate. So it's, it sounds like if the HOA has the right documents, that that would trump over any decision we made. Let me um, give you an example. So on January 1st, 2018, we issue a permit to allow short-term rental. And there's nothing in the file, we have no knowledge whatsoever that there are any CCNRs that prohibit short-term rentals for that particular house. In June 2018, the HOA adopts, they amend their CCNRs to prohibit short-term rentals in that community. Right. Well, then I, I, I can from, understand that. Yeah. If they prohibit it, we're going to abide by that. Right. They're going to make but, that decision. What happens if they say, that it's okay. No, and no that's okay. So 30, so we tell the um, permit holder, the homeowner, well, oh, wow, we just got evidence that these CCNRs uh, apply to your, your unit there, 
and you can't no you can no longer use it so we have to revoke your permit oh wait a minute i have 30 days to prove i can 30 days within that 30 day period he comes he or she comes with a letter as if oh this is not retroactive this takes effect 2019 okay then we we won't summarily revoke your permit councilman the the, get some funny things the, a lot different than with you hey steve the yeah. intention on uh, Uncredible is that there isn't one staff member that uni uh, unilaterally decides that. Uh, this would be something that we would run by uh, the city attorney's office. Um, the director of economic development and marketing would come talk to me. We'd have a staff meeting. We might convene some sort of a uh, uh, subcommittee meeting of some sort and talk it through before we make a determination of what's credible. Well, I don't, I, I find no fault with that and agree with all of that and assume all of that as well. Uh, but I, let me get a question and a straight answer. By straight, I mean yes or no. So in the future, we can, we can all know where we are. If the city has turned somebody down because uh, of, uh, well, for whatever reason, and their HOA permits them to have a uh, short-term rental out of their house. Uh, who, who's going to prevail on that? Is it going to be the HOA rules, or is it going to be the city's rules, if that dichotomy should develop? I mean, we should know which way it's going to go so that everybody can know. Or maybe it's too general, and it's... Uh, making things more awkward. It depends on why it was um, denied or, do you say denied or revoked? Denied? Okay. <coughs> say that again? It depends on why the permit was denied. Well, if it was denied. Oh, okay, was, uh, what would be a good example where there may be a dispute where the city says no, but the HOA says yes, I can't believe the HOA would Mr. City Manager, if I might, just for a moment. So, um, Council Member Hobart, there may be situations where even though a community allows for short-term rentals through their HOA, a homeowner with a short-term rental that has a permit may have had it revoked for a number of reasons, maybe very egregious region, reasons such as not submitting their TOT. Maybe they go a whole year and they don't submit it and they ignore our requests to submit that TOT and we revoke that permit. Even though the HOA would allow them, we no longer would because right. of our program that's in place. No, you're, you're right. We should prevail in that situation in the city if they haven't met the other rules. Okay, well, I'm okay with things the way they are. Uh, I just uh, well, expect that we'll all keep an eye on it and see if any uh, set of circumstances arise that <clears throat> throw a monkey wrench into it, so we'll, All right. we'll change it if, it, if that's okay. the case. Okay. Dane, are you comfortable then to make the motion? Yes, I am. Thank you. I would move that uh, the City Council reintroduce and read by title only the ordinance number next in order amending Chapter 3.25, Vacation Rentals of Title Three Revenue and Finance of the Ranch Mirage Municipal Code and adopt resolution number 2017 next in order, increasing the short-term rental certificate application fee and establishing the amount of the annual regulatory permit charge regulated under chapter 3.25 of title three of the Rancho Mirage Municipal Code. Does this include the amendment on page 16-13C1? C if the applicant has had a prior short-term rental certificate suspended or revoked. This is the amendment within the prior four calendar years or has been cited for violating any provision of the code related to the use. Which way would you recommend? Or actually, it should be. Which way would you recommend for ease of reading and understanding? Oh, I would say, oh, if the applicant has had a prior short-term rental certificate suspended or revoked, or has been cited for violating any provision of the code related to the use or maintenance of the property of the subject short-term rental within the prior four calendar years. Yeah. Okay. 
I didn't put the word cap uh, uh, the calendar in it, though. As, as the dispute rages on. <laughs> okay. All right. I guess you second it, right? Yes. All right. And everybody in, in sync, we will now call for a vote. Motion passes 5-0. Thank you, everyone. Next item is number 17, is a resolution regarding the Emergency Preparedness Commission. Britt Wilson, Managing Analysis, will present the staff report. Britt? Good afternoon, Honorable Council. The Emergency Preparedness Commission was established by the City Council in 1998 to effectively plan and prepare for emergencies such as major earthquakes, floods, extended power outages, and similar uh, disasters. Over the years, uh, or its main purpose is to prepare and train our city residents on how to prepare for a major earthquake in the aftermath of such a quake. Over the years, a medical advisor and a technical advisor position have been added to the composition of the commission. The medical advisor and the technical advisors are non-voting <coughs> members of the EPC. The EPC currently, the Emergency Preparedness Commission, currently has 10 voting members, one medical advisor and one technical advisor that specializes in earthquakes. Uh, with the increasing amount of cyber attacks and the associated risk of those cyber attacks, the Emergency Preparedness Commission has uh, been studying and they are now recommending that another technical advisor position be added to the commission which would specialize in cyber security. This new position, uh, as the other advisors, would be appointed by the mayor with the consent of the city council. <coughs> The uh, proposed resolution, which is attached to your staff report, if it's approved by you, it will uh, make the EPC still having 10 voting members, and they will now have a total of three technical advisors. Uh, one is uh, specializing in medical, one is specializing in earthquakes, and one in cybersecurity. Uh, the medical advisor's position is technically being redesignated or reclassified as a technical advisor. So 10 commissioners, three technical advisors with those specialty fields. So with that, Mr. Mayor, I will turn it back to you and be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Brett. And the three advisors are non-voting again. I'll just that is correct, that, Mr. Mayor. Correct? So everybody's aware. All is it right. going to be three? Three advisors, is that what you're saying? Three advisors non-voting. So we're increasing it by one more tech. Who has been on the commission before? He's just coming back. All Mr. Right. Mayor, can you say that again? Uh, Mr. Mayor, say it again. Well, let me see. <laughs> and with gusto. <laughs> I can say it in Italian if you want me to. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions on this subject? All right. Well, just, no, just one question. Yes, sir. What, what would be uh, one or two examples of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Sorry. The For the... Uh, the technical advisor, uh, what would be examples of the cyber attacks that uh, we might anticipate receiving? Well, he's an expert in that, and I think Iris can really fill in a little more on that. Thank you. Well, he is an expert. He's written a book, and he does uh, lectures all over the country on cyber terrorism and how to prevent it, uh, how to train your employees and staff members on uh, not to open uh, items that come across your email, either on a tablet or at your business. And a lot of these, these emails that come across look very official. They've got all the different bells and whistles that uh, would make them look official. But he is, he is uh, trying to make sure that enough tra uh, training gets out there uh, in the community so that people do not fall victim to this ter terrorism. Well, what my question was directed to mostly is why on this particular committee, the Emergency Preparedness Commission, is his work going to be uh, in conjunction with the work of the committee? Or is it it's intended with, with, to have some wider, expansive... Well, he does work with the committee. He does give lectures, and he does lecture at our library every year uh, in our town hall forum. But he's going to... He, for all intents and purposes, he's a member of that committee to advise that committee. Is that right? Uh, the, Mr. Uh, Mr. Hobart, there's not a separate committee. There are just it's three technical advisors. They, they serve on the commission, if you will, but they are not commissioners. They're non-voting. And they're just, like I say, one of them is Dr. Maletti. He's, he's very knowledgeable about earthquakes and the sociology behind him. So that's what he sort of consults and helps the commission. The current medical advisor that will be redesignated as just another technical advisor talks about medical issues. 
Um, and then this position would be cybersecurity. And, and the, the reason they are looking at cybersecurity is because they deem it a disaster. So if, if cyber attackers attack City Hall and, and shut down all our power grids in the whole city, that is, becomes a disaster that we need to prepare for. And that's in sort of a nutshell why they want cybersecurity uh, okay. Thank you. studied. And, right. and it fits in well with this commission because of their work with the community. They work with our residents and with our businesses. And uh, with these type of cyber attacks, they are going after individuals uh, to try to get you to uh, report in your personal information to a website that looks legitimate that is actually not. Uh, in addition, they are attacking businesses and they are attacking governments. Uh, so for this program, we actually train all of our staff uh, to detect these things so that the city does not fall victim and our systems don't get compromised. So with the outreach that the Emergency Preparedness Commission already does, uh, this program fits in nicely and it's uh, another way that we're trying to uh, protect and educate our residents. Thank you. Thank you. Right, and also this is the appointment of the position, not the person at this meeting. This will be coming up uh, next time, so you okay. can vote on it. All right, does that answer all the questions? Does Iris, that help? Are you happy with that? I am. Does okay. that help, Dana? Dana, you all right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Okay, thank you. Very good. And thank you, Isaiah and Britt. Yeah, all right. I will open this to the public for any comments on this. Anybody want to speak on it? All right, seeing none, and I think we've gone through it at this end here, so then I will ask Iris to make a motion, please. I move that the City Council approve resolution number 2017, next in order, adding one technical advisor position to the Community Emergency Preparedness Commission and redesignating the existing emergency medical advisor as a technical advisor. Second. Mr. Mayor, I just have one question on this. Yes, sir. This individual is appointed by the mayor, is that correct? Yes. And is it a yearly appointment? It is a new appointment that went away and we brought it back. But is that reappointment done on a yearly basis? It would be a yearly yes. basis, right? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, I yes. Apologize. I apologize. Normally it's a, just when it becomes vacated. Uh, I don't recall in the resolution if it listed a term. If it's a, a, a mayor's <laughs> appointment, it would he much go along with his regular appointments yes. to and the emergency yeah, preparedness. Yeah, defer to the city attorney if he, that has to be like ratified every year. Uh, yes. So when, when we uh, bring back the uh, annual appointment process, the technical advisors for this commission are listed there as well. And uh, the mayor will appoint with the consent of the city council. Uh, so annually, the full city council does see who's on the commission, and that includes the technical advisors. Right. right. Would and in. that would be at the same time that we approve all of the commissions yes, and right. the members of the commission. Right. Correct. Right. 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 Okay, thank you. All right. Pot right. Are we ready? Please vote. Motion passes 5-0. Thank you. Next on the agenda is number 18, which is a resolution regarding Senate Bill number one. And Jesse Eckenrott, Senior Public Works Manager, will present the staff report. Thank you, Mayor, City Council. You may have heard that gas prices are going to be rising shortly here, and that's due to Senate Bill 1. So I wanted to give you a basic framework on Senate Bill 1 before I get into the staff report. Could you go back to the first slide, please? So uh, Senate Bill 1 is also known as uh, SB 1. This was signed by Governor Brown in April of 2017. And SB 1 is a statewide bill, so this is going to apply to all cities and counties throughout California. Uh, next slide. Uh, SB1 goals. SB1 is very similar to Measure A. The goals of SB1 are to improve roadway infrastructure. The additional funding that SB1 will bring our state is des designated for roadway improvement projects. The four main types of roadway improvement projects that SB1 has identified are road maintenance and rehab, safety projects, complete street components, and traffic control devices. So where does SB1 money come from? Currently, our city collects existing gas tax revenues in a special revenue fund. 
That's what we call our gas tax fund, which is our fund 224. And the additional increment created from SB1 revenues will also be collected in the city's existing <laughs> gas tax fund. The estimated revenues from S SB1 have already been included in our fiscal year 17-18 adopted budget. And this slide is a breakdown of how SB1 revenues are generated. And it's important to note that all of the SB1 taxes and fees are in addition to the existing taxes and fees. So beginning November 1, we're going to see a 12 cent uptick in regular fuel, 20 cents for diesel. Uh, beginning January 1, 2018, vehicle registration is going to go up between $25 to $175 per vehicle. Okay. That's based on the value of the vehicle. And July, July 1, 2019, diesel fuel is going to go up 4% in the sales and use tax. And July 1, 2020, we're going to see an uptick of $100 per vehicle for zero emission vehicles. So um, these are going to not only apply to the residents of our city, but this is statewide. Hmm. And let's talk about where the money goes. So on an annual basis, there's $762 million uh, that's designated for various programs and agencies. Those are bulleted there. After that 762 million is dispersed to those agencies, the remaining funds split 50% to the state and 50% to counties and cities. Um, and then city funds are allocated on a population basis. So it's per capita. So that's how Rancho Mirage, um, the formula applies to Rancho Mirage on a population basis. Now to the next slide, please. So how much money will SB1 bring the city? Um, the, f the first year that this is going to be implemented is this current fiscal year, and it's going to be a partial year. So the estimate is $104,000 for this year, and that represents a 25% increase in our gas tax revenue, uh, bringing the total in our gas tax revenue for 1718 to $520,000. And then 18-19 will be our first full year, and the estimated revenue is $310,000. So this is a 10-year bill. Um, so we should see another um, eight full years after this and end on a partial year as well. So this is a 10-year bill. And um, uh, for a full year, it's important to note this is a 74% increase in our existing gas tax revenues. Uh, so that's the basic summary of SB1 and the impact it will have on our city. You go ahead and shut that down. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get into the staff report unless there's any questions on that. Okay. So Mayor and City Council, thank you for the opportunity to present to you today. The staff report, resolution, and exhibits were created to comply with the eligibility requirements of SB1. In order to be eligible for SB1 revenues, the city has to adopt a, re a resolution at a regular public meeting amending the city's budget to incorporate the expenditures from the approved SB1 project list. The project list has to include four key elements. That is one, project description, two, location of project, three, project completion date, and four, the estimated useful life of the improvement. Uh, we're gonna identify the project that we have um, designated for this SB1 project. Um, this is a three-quarter mile stretch of pavement rehabilitation on the westbound number one lane of Dinah Shore between Bob Hope and Los Alamos. The project is estimated to cost uh, $250,000, take approximately three to four weeks to uh, construct and have an estimated useful life of 20 years. Um, fortunately for us, due to the Polte development, they're gonna be doing the lane closest to the sidewalk, so we're gonna piggyback and clean up the other side of the westbound um, lane. Um, so by adopting and improving the resolution, the project list, and budget amendment, uh, the city will be eligible to receive SB1 revenues. That concludes my presentation, and please feel free to let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, Jesse. Anybody in the audience wish to speak on this item? All right, seeing none, any council members have questions or comments of staff? Jesse, the $250,000 is that a fixed amount or is that variable based on some of these other factors that you previously described? Uh, that's an estimated for the expenditure of the um, construction there. 
It's important to note that naming the project does not mean that we have to uh, do that project. We are only eligible when we name a project. So we have to name a project, but it specifically says in the um, bill that it does not limit our flexibility. So at a later point, if we decide there's another project that we wanna do, we are able to do that. And we do not have to report uh, at the time we're gonna do the project. We have an end of year reporting requirement that we send to the California Transportation Commission, which outlines which projects we did. Is there a cutoff date on the actual time that we have to make a designation on a project? There is not. So, so we, we are gonna adopt a list every year. Um, there is no requirement to actually perform the projects that are on that list. It, you have to um, simply provide a list. You have to meet a maintenance of effort. And what you end up spending the money on, you have to report. And those, the uh, projects that you do have to be in compliance with the SB1 uh, regulations. Can you accumulate money from one year to the next? Yes, you can. So every agency is going to have this issue. Our first year is a partial year, so we're receiving $100,000. Very difficult or impossible to do a road project that's worth our time for $100,000. Um, so there's actually a stipulation to where you can borrow from other funds, and the um, state controller's office will reapportion what you spent. So you can borrow in advance, or you can accumulate the money and spend it one time. Sounds like a good deal, huh? That's pretty good. It's a good Especially deal for the city. Accumulate. Yeah, it, that's amazing. When you're at the pump, you might feel differently, but uh, wow. <laughs> for our roads, we'll definitely see an uptick in the uh, improvement on our roads. So this is going to be, you know, it's estimated to be $3 million over the next 10 years for our city. That's so fabulous. it will help our roads and streets. Very, very good. Any other questions? All right, seeing none. I will make a motion that the City Council approve resolution number next in order, approving and adopting certain budget adjustments to the fiscal year 2017-2018 budget and approving the project listed to be funded by the Road Maintenance and Rehabilitation Program and Ordinance with Senate Bill 1, the Road Repair and Accountability Act. Do I have a second? Second. Please vote. Motion passes 5-0. Thank you, Christy. We will now recess into closed session. And with that, Mr. Quintanilla, would you please tell us about the closed session? I will, Mr. Mayor. But first, um, a general rule of thumb to prohibit or um, prevent cyber attacks is don't open any emails and the subject matter is in Korean or Russian or it's from Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> Have you done I'm that, serious. Steve? I'm serious. I'm serious. <laughs> especially the Nigeria part. <laughs> um, so the council is gonna recess into closed session now, uh, pursuant to government code section 54956.9, regarding three potential initiation litigation items and the existing case known as Veronica Juarez versus City of Rancho Mirage. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, everyone, coming and being with us. Thank you, everybody on television, for watching us, and we are now into closed session. Thank you. <laughs>